uh, finnygrooves.com. Um, we're going to be putting the videos up there on that too and trying to keep it updated as close as we can. We both work, so yeah, go check the Infinity Grooves website. We're going to be starting. Put more stuff up there, more content, more pictures and stuff. It's pretty awesome. I, I checked it out, and I think I was one of the first ones that got the email list. That, you got an email yet? Yeah. No, not yet, but, yeah, I was, I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Put my email it. That's a, like, you know, just in case I forget something here, it'll send me and say, hey, you done this. Oh, well, hey. Also, um, uh, the radio station. We have a radio station, you know, besides doing this, we have a radio station, and we play anything. From rock, country, metal, R&B, 50s, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Well, we play everything. But if you got a Google, you can download the app. Unfortunately, with Apple, we had a problem with Apple. We have it on the the um, website yeah. on Infinity Grooves. If you click over to the right button, pull it down, it says Infinity Grooves Radio. You can click on that and play and start listening to the radio station. So check that out. Hey, YouTube. Joker, Finley Grooves, back with another one. Still doing Ronnie James Dio week. Today we're doing Black Sabbath, um, Die Young. Uh, what year? What year? Seventy-eight. He, I don't know. Did he uh, <laughs> go to Sabbath? I think uh, probably eighty or eighty or eighty-one, probably. I think. So he went to. <clears throat> Here's a rainbow. Nineteen, following his departure from Rainbow in 1979, he joined Black Sabbath, replacing fired Ozzy Osbourne. Too much coke. He met Tony Iommi by chance at the at the Rainbow on the Sunset Strip in Los Los Angeles in 1979. A lot of good stuff happened on the Strip down there between the Troubadour, the Roxy, and the Rainbow. I mean, I, I can just, ma I would love to just go out there and just take a trip down in the 80s and just see what, you know, the strip looked like yeah. with all these bands, Rat, um, you know, of course, Motley Crue, and then you got, you know. Um, wasn't uh, Lemmy from Motorhead, wasn't he like the president of Rainbow? Like, I don't that, know. That, they didn't, I think it was like a. They didn't vote on it. He was just he was there all the time. Yeah, he, he was there all the time, yeah. all the time. I mean, I, I, if y'all get a chance to read the dirt from Motley Crue, you'll see what they ran into Lemmy a, a few times down there. I mean, he, he was always there playing those little machines. I think yeah on the corner. Yeah. All right. Well, we're doing Black Sabbath D, uh, Die Young today. Um, one of my favorites off uh, the Heaven and Hell album. First album that he he did with Black Sabbath, so let's jump into it. <laughs> to stop it so soon but i love how he just starts jamming just came right, right in. in you know yeah. after the slow <clears throat> intro and he just started you got a small solo at the right. beginning of the song yeah i mean it's just and then how it just hey which which yeah, finger yeah. was he was missing yeah. part of index oh, finger was it his, his yeah. index finger yeah he always had to wear a thimble oh is that what he that, did that's how, that's how he played i read that how to keep that thing from falling off i i don't remember because you know <laughs> I, he said that he, you know he I read the uh, autobiography of all the Black Sabbath members, and it said he was working in a wood shop or you know carpenter shop for his dad, and he was 
you know, cutting wood and just it's gone. Didn't even think to pick it up or nothing. Just put some tape on it. He had a gig that night. Played the gig with t- duct tape on his finger. Mm. Then it, it, later on, his mom was a seamstress. Found that the thimble would fit perfectly right there on his index finger. Mm. Keep it going. <laughs> I hate to lose a finger. Yeah, though. Chris Moore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say that. Let's keep it going. You're one in AOK. You're back to the wall. I was, yeah, I, I was thinking that a second ago, but I mean, I never knew they used one. I didn't either. You know, I, I've heard that. I, I love this album and I've heard it before, but I really hadn't paid attention to that being an organ back there. Well, we know one thing. They didn't have computers and stuff back then. Yeah. <laughs> this is a cool sound yeah. though. I like to know how they made that. <laughs> I wonder if it was, I wonder if it was one of those, uh, not an organ, but, uh, like a synthesizer or something that's might have been in the back. Yeah, might have been that. Yep. Keep it going. Because you know they used a lot of the synthesizing or synthesizers in the eighties. So yeah. I don't. Called in relief. <laughs> Call John Rocker in. Dude, I'm just, I mean, it's awesome. This song is so great. Uh, th- this is, this whole album is amazing. 
you know, the first two Black Sabbath albums I bought was We Sold Our Soul for Rock and Roll and that one. I think I ended up getting, well, I didn't buy no album. I bought the cassette tape, but I think I ended up getting the, well, the yeah, very well, first one. Well, that's what I mean. I remember I, I ended up <laughs> Ozzy on the front cover and some kind of, looked like behind the ha- in front of a house. and the Oh, like yeah, that. when it did. Uh, yeah. 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 I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. So, um, but now you can't hardly find. We sold our soul for rock and roll. You can't find it anywhere hardly. Is that a full album or is that a compilation? I, it's a full album. I think it had nine songs on it. Yeah, they didn't get. They didn't go past eight hardly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it had. Well, it might have had eight. It's eight or nine songs they had on there, but I don't. You know. There's a few albums you don't see anymore. We sold our souls for rock and roll. Um, oh no, Monk's uh, brain, brain fart. Um, never mind. <laughs> you quit? Yeah, I'm done because I I can't remember the name of that album. It was a big album, but it that you don't. Oh, uh, Garth Brooks, the uh, the. The hits, you know, has his face painted in red, white, and blue, stars and stripes. You don't see it anymore. I mean, I have it, thank goodness, but I mean, you, you, it's hard to find it new. I mean, you can find it new. I mean, used anytime, but yeah, Apple don't have it. I mean, it's like Jimi Hendrix and the Experience when he come out with that greatest hits. They had a. I was telling you about it a while back. You know, they come out with an album called The um, Experience or Experience Hendrix. The family didn't like the choices of songs they had on that album. So since they owned the rights, they had to go back and change it again, had to pull all those albums off and put a new one out. I think it was called Jimi Hendrix, Are You Experienced the Greatest Hits? I mean, I'd want... Whatever he put out, out. So if I was the family, that's that's yeah. that's what made him famous. That's who he is. I mean, heck, he's still putting. He even put three albums out in the last ten years. You got uh, the songs of Neptune or whatever it is. Hardest working dead man. Kind of like Elvis. But uh, <laughs> hey, if you're a DL fan but you don't know Black Sabbath, you need to go check out those three albums with Black Sabbath because they're great. Yeah, they're awesome. Um. This was uh, Die Young, though, off the, off the Heaven and Hell album, the first one with Dio. Uh, we're Infinity Grooves. Subscribe, like, and comment, and come join us on this journey. Peace.